Welcome everybody. We are looking at abstract nouns today. Now you already know some things about nouns. We're going to build on that knowledge here. Our goal today is using abstract nouns. Not only what are they, but how do you use them? So as a reminder, nouns are incredibly important because every sentence requires a noun and a verb. There are two of the eight parts of speech that absolutely must be present in order for a sentence to be complete, and it's a noun and a verb. So abstract nouns are a type of noun, and nouns are absolutely critical for a sentence. The subject of a sentence is always going to be a noun. The subject is who or what the sentence is about, and that is the main role that a noun can play in a sentence, being the subject. But there are a lot of other different roles, and you can learn about that in the future, such as being an object or a direct object. But for now, just remember that nouns have to be in a sentence. At least one has to be in a sentence. And if it plays the role of the subject, it is who or what the sentence is about. A noun is always going to be one of those four things. A person, place, thing, or idea. There's a really annoying jingle you won't get out of your head. Let me give it to you. A noun is a person, place, or thing, or idea. Now, just try to get that out of your head. You're going to be trying to go to sleep tonight and thinking, a noun is a person, place, or thing, or idea. Hopefully that's educationally valuable for you at least. So our goal today, once again, using abstract nouns. Let's dive in a little bit. There are two types of nouns when we split them between abstract and something else. There are a lot of different categories that we can split up nouns as, such as um, common or proper. Um, but another way to split them up into two categories is between abstract nouns or concrete nouns. Now, concrete nouns simply mean, well, actually, before I explain it, I'm going to just show you some examples, and I want to see if you can figure out what concrete and abstract nouns uh, are from this. So an example of a concrete noun could be your friend. And your friend might show you kindness. Kindness is an abstract noun. Concrete noun is friend in there. Another friend, uh, another concrete example might be mom. And your mom might give you love. Mom is a concrete noun. Love is an abstract noun. Do you have any ideas yet on how to differentiate between these? Here's another one, student. Abstract noun related to student would be education. You are getting an education through your learning. Education is an abstract noun. Mm, how about a ring, a type of jewelry? And that could be related to marriage. Marriage is an abstract noun. Let's try athlete. And an, an abstract noun related to athlete might be speed. So based on this list, do you have any definition? Can you describe what a concrete noun is like or what an abstract noun is like? Maybe you notice from this that all the concrete nouns are physical and the abstract nouns are non-physical. In other words, you can't touch you can touch the concrete nouns. If there's a friend, if there's a ring, that's something that's, that's physically available right in front of you. But these abstract nouns, you're not able to touch. You can't physically grab education. You can't physically grab speed. So to determine if a noun is concrete or abstract, I like to think about the touch test. If you are not able to touch something, which noun is it going to be between concrete or abstract? It's going to be an abstract noun. So that touch test can help us remember if a noun or figure out if a noun is concrete or abstract. But I do want to give a warning. Just because you can't touch it doesn't mean it's a noun. We still have to determine if the word is a noun or not. And remember that a noun is always going to be a person, place, thing, or idea. I think it'd be valuable at this stage just to add an example in of each of these. So Chad is a person. A place could be your school building or your home. A thing would be, mm, how about a pencil? And an idea, uh, let's just go with love again there. So those are some examples of a 
person, place, thing, or idea. So we're going to find the nouns and find out, are these abstract nouns? Take a look at this sentence. When I was young, I thought many foolish things. Now, where are the nouns in here? Sometimes the noun is a pronoun. You'll learn more about those later. But I is going to be the subject. This sentence is about I. Do you see any other I's in there? I do too. I thought. Okay. Do you see any other nouns? People, places, things, or ideas? Hmm. When is telling us when it happened. It's not a subject or anything. Was is going to be our state of being verb. Thought is an action verb. Many and foolish are adjectives describing things. And things is another um, things is another noun here. Now is this a noun? Is this noun a concrete or abstract noun? Can you touch things? Is it physically possible? Yes, yes it is. Um, I, a person, yes, that's someone who's standing right in front of you, who is there, that is going to be a concrete noun. So all three of those nouns are abstract. But I wanna take us back to that reminder. Just because you can't touch it doesn't mean it is a noun. And so let's take a look here. Are there any things in here that you can't touch? Well, I can't touch young. I can't touch thought. Well, all of those, it's uh, those aren't nouns. And so they are not abstract nouns. Okay, let's try this again now with the next example. Find the nouns. Are they abstract? My struggle has gone on for ages. Let's find the subject. Who or what is this sentence about? Who or what? Well, this word's related to the who, but it's not a who. It's not a noun. It's actually an adjective describing something else. What is the sentence about? It's about the struggle. My struggle has gone on for ages. Well, how about verb? We need to do a verb hunt here. Every sentence has a noun and a verb. It's a subject and a predicate. And so what verb is related to struggle? We have a verb phrase here, has gone. My struggle has gone on for ages. Okay, what else do you see? Do you see any more nouns? Person, place, thing, or idea? Well, I'll give you a hint. You'll learn more about this in the future as well. Prepositional phrases. We have a prepositional phrase. It's gone on for ages. And a prepositional phrase always ends with a noun. We have a noun right here in ages. So let's ask ourselves with our two nouns, struggle and ages, are either of these, um, are they concrete or are they abstract? You can give it the touch test. Are you able to feel a struggle? You're able to feel it inside of you, but could you stick your hand out and on the table feel struggle? We're not able to. It might be an emotion that we feel inside, but an emotion that we feel inside is actually a clue that it's an abstract noun. Emotions in our feelings are one of the most common types of abstract nouns. So struggle, we found one. It's an abstract noun. Let's look at our other one, ages. Is this a concrete or an abstract noun? Well, can you reach out in front of you and touch ages? Ages is a length of time. It means a very long time. And time is something else that we aren't able to physically touch. It affects us. It's real, but it's more in the idea realm, and it's not physical. So both nouns in this sentence are abstract. And our nouns up above here were all concrete. Okay, you're getting great at this. Let's do one more. Let's pull this one up. My cousin's car emits a nasty noise each time it starts. Do you see any nouns? Who or what is the subject of this sentence? Who or what is the sentence about? It is about the car. Do you see any? Uh, let's, talk, let's look for the verb. 
What verb is related to this car? What is the car doing? Or how is the car? Here's a fancy verb for you. You can throw in your writing. Emits. That means lets out. It makes a noise. My cousin's car makes, emits, lets out a nasty noise each time it starts. Great. We found the subject of the sentence, and now we have the verb in this sentence. The predicate is beginning with emits. Do you see any other nouns? Oh, well, cousin's a person, but this cousin is actually playing the role of an adjective because it's telling us about the car. So this word cousin is not, and cousins is not the subject. It's not even a noun in the sentence. It's telling us about, um, about whose car it is. And the word my is telling us about whose car it is as well. So it's an adjective, a describing word. Nasty is telling us about the noise. Let's look at noise. What part of speech is noise? What role is noise playing in this sentence? My cousin's car emits a noise. Well, that's something that I can't touch or feel, but it's a real thing. It's a sound. A noise is a noun. And is it a concrete or abstract noun? Can you reach out and touch the sound? Can you feel the noise? You might feel the vibrations in your ear from noise, but you're not with your hand touching noise. So we found not only a noun, another abstract noun here. My cousin's car emits a nasty noise each time it starts. Do we have any other nouns in here? There's a great clue from this one. Ages was the length of time, and I see the word time right here. Time is a noun, it's a length of time, and it's in the uh, idea realm. It's not physical, but it's something that is real. All right, let's take a look at these sentences here. Uh, for this part, let's, let's take this first sentence on its own. I want you to think of um, a word that's going to fit well in here. Each morning I feel, hmm, what do you feel about going to school? Some of you are going to be feeling excited to go to school. Some of you are going to be feel um, happy to go to school. Others of you might feel sad about going to school. But let's go with excited. I feel excited to go to school. Now, I mentioned earlier that emotions, how we feel, are one of the main types of abstract nouns. This, let's look at this word excited. I feel excited to go to school. Is excited an abstract noun, or is it an adjective describing? Let's look at this. I feel excited. Is excited a noun? Is it a person? Excited a person? No. Is it a place? Excited's not a place. Is excited a, a thing? Mm, it's not a physical thing I can touch. It's not an idea thing. Ugh. Is it an idea? excited. I am excited. Maybe it's an idea. Is it a describing word for how you feel? Excited. What do you think there? This is really important. Is this an adjective or a noun? I feel excited. Excited is actually an adjective describing how I feel. Now, excitement, excitement. And I'm going to change my sentence a little bit because I can. I feel excitement about going to school. Excitement is our noun form of excited, and this word means uh, that you are excited. This is a noun, and it's going to be an abstract noun. It's not something we can feel or touch uh, physically. It's something we feel in our emotions, and that's a clue that it's an abstract noun. Excitement is the noun version of excited. Maybe you were really watching and you noticed morning is another noun. Is morning a concrete or abstract noun? Great things to think about here. One more noun, school. There it is, going to school. Okay, can you come over to my house on? Well, I want to ask you, should a concrete or an abstract noun fit in here? Which one fits better? Can you come over to my house on? Are you going to come over on person? No, on place, on... Uh, is there a place? Can you come over to my house on, huh? Can you come over to my house on, hmm? Well, I can think of some abstract nouns that fit really well in there. 
on Thursday. Thursday, we can't physically touch Thursday. If it's printed on a calendar, we're touching the calendar, not Thursday. So, huh, interesting. Can you come over to my house on Thursday? So we could fit an abstract noun in there really well. One more. Our car needs new something. Does a concrete or an abstract noun fit better in here? A concrete or an abstract noun. Our car needs new, maybe it needs new tires, probably something physical in there. So as a review, concrete and abstract nouns, here are a couple examples. Kids and sports are concrete nouns. These are physical things, they're real, people, place, or thing. Abstract nouns, such as childhood and fun, they're real, but you can't touch them. They're non-physical. So remember the touch test. That's going to be a great way to tell uh, if something is concrete or abstract. And one last reminder I want to leave us with is this idea right here. A person, place, or thing, these are going to be concrete nouns. Person, place, or thing. And if this is an idea, the idea is going to be an abstract noun. So from those first three categories, we have concrete, the last three idea, but lastly, just because you can't touch it, doesn't mean it is a noun.